If the tracker in DaVinci Resolve isn't giving you ideal results, no problem, we can manually track things here in DaVinci Resolve. So in this video, we're going to manually track the license plate of this car here and blur it out. And you'll see here we have objects moving in front of that car. So the tracker is gonna, of course, lose the track in those areas. So this is why we're going to do it manually. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut up this track here, this clip, to have separate clips. Now you don't have to do this if you have essentially one linear shot without other objects obscuring your view, okay? So you may not have to do this, but you'll see why I do it here in a minute. Now technically you wouldn't have to do it this way. You could also keyframe the uh, changes over here in color, but I like to do it like this. It's a little bit uh, cleaner. So I'm gonna cut it right there. If you don't know the shortcuts I use to cut things and to zoom in and out, et cetera, et cetera, please watch the, uh, the full video on, uh, on all the shortcuts you need to know uh, in DaVinci Resolve, full video on that. So I'll come forward here and right about there, we need to blur that out right there. So we'll cut it here. And then we have another obstruction here, right about there. So we'll go ahead and cut it there. And then right about there, we need to do another clip there. And I think we got it about there. It goes out of frame, so we don't need to blur this uh, end part of the clip. Okay, then I'll move my playhead back here and make sure I select my first clip right there. Come over here to color. I'll choose our power window, just this icon right there, and I'll choose a square. Zoom in, I'm gonna change the size, pull it way down, zoom in nice and close here. I can go to Alt F, get a bigger view of that if I want to. Pull this way down here and size it up to the license plate. I'll make it a little bit bigger than it really needs to be. So that's pretty good right there. Okay. Do Alt F, get out of that view, open my effects and grab a box blur and throw it right on the node. You can ungang these things if you wanna change your blur, but I'll just gang them together. Make sure I'm all the way back here on the first frame. Zoom in here, use this drop down, show my power window so I can grab this right here and put it right there. So that is my starting frame. Now we're going to keyframe this or track it manually. So come over here to your tracker and make sure you switch this to frame. It's gotta be on frame. It's not gonna work the way you want if it's not on frame. Put it on frame, very good. Go ahead and add your first keyframe just by clicking your little diamond. You see the keyframe right here on the tracker. Now, depending on your scene, you may be able to go forward five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 frames and then make your adjustment. Or if you have a very complex, you know, very complex movements, you may only be able to go forward one frame at a time. So I'll use my keyboard, just the arrow keys, and we'll go forward a few frames. And I'll just manually grab my power window and move it right over the license plate. You can see down here, another keyframe was automatically created for me. Then as I step back, you can see that it's tracking along manually, okay? So again, forward a few more frames and move it where it needs to go. A few more frames, move it where it needs to go. A few more frames, move it where it needs to go. You can see those keyframes are being created for me right here. Now, if something is also changing in size, you can also animate that. So I, I could come back here to my power window and I could change the size here, make it bigger, make it smaller. Or you could also zoom in here and you can grab any of these sides and you can manually change exactly where you want those points to be. And all of that will be keyframed and animated as well. All right, we'll go forward, forward. Okay, and that's the end of the clip. Just move it a little bit right there. Okay, press Z on the keyboard, zooms out. Let's come back to our edit page here and go to full screen and you can see that tracks perfectly along. See, perfectly along and then it disappears because the license plate is already obstructed by the tree so we don't need to blur that. And that is why I cut this clip. As you can see, now they're like two separate clips. That is why I cut the clip so the blur would automatically just go away. Again, you could also, if you wanna animate that, keyframe it in the color page, you can do it like that, but I like to, uh, I like to do it like this. 
Okay, so now we don't need to blur this part. Let's come forward until we get to the next part of the clip. So this part right here, and we need to blur this little section right there. I actually need to change this edit a little bit, don't I? Because right there, it's already obscured. So I'm going to take this edit point and just drag it back right there. We're good. So we'll grab this section now and head over to color. Same exact thing. Power window, square, pull the size way down, change the aspect. You can also, again, do this manually. Instead of using these controls, I could just grab these corners and just pin them wherever I want. Okay. So we can do it like this as well, however you prefer to do it. And if you don't see your on-screen controls, make sure they're called up right here. If this is turned off, you're not gonna see your controls. So just turn that on, you'll have your controls right there on screen. Let's grab our box blur, throw it on right there, head over to our uh, tracker, again, over to frame. I'm gonna take my playhead back to about right here. We'll start right about there. Make sure our keyframe is there. It is there automatically. If it's not, just click uh, click your keyframe there. And I'll start going forward one or two frames at a time. In this case, just one frame, just to make sure it tracks perfectly. Okay. And it's gone. Okay, on to the next clip, as you can see. Look at it here. Tracks perfectly till we get to that pole. It disappears right there. And then onto our next clip, as you can see, right here, it's already obscured by the pole, so we don't need to uh, blur that area, right? So that's why we cut everything onto this clip here. And same exact stuff, back to color, back to our power window. In this case, we're going to start with the square, but if you need a circle or something else, you can do that. Let me size this down a bit. And we have it sized correctly. Put on our box blur, head over to our tracker, head over to frame. Pull my playhead back. We make sure I have this about where I want it to start, about there. Go forward a frame and just start moving things wherever they need to be. All right. So I'll go ahead and finish this. Now, here we have a bit of a problem or a bit of a change, right? Because we're changing uh, sort of the view of the car and of the license plate because it's coming closer to us. So let's also manipulate the size of our blur and the overall position. Step back a frame, you can see how it's more square here, and then it sort of changes a bit in the uh, overall size. Go forward another frame or so, put it like this, can pin it however I want in each frame. Just make sure we're covering everything we need to uh, cover there. Go forward a couple frames this time. That's pretty good right there. Make sure it tracks along. And it is a couple more frames. Now, in this case, again, we can move this however we want. Again, if something is getting larger in your view and you need to make your blur larger, you can just do it like this and that will animate along. OK. And a couple more frames. And we're good. So now we have manually tracked and blurred the license plate for this car. All right, come back here. You can see blurred perfectly, perfectly, perfectly through all of those obstacles, no problem at all. And now you can probably see why, or hopefully you can see why I added those cuts to these clips. Uh, so I didn't have to add a bunch of animation over here in color to move, you know, to move that blur out of the way or to fade it off. Instead, I just add a cut here and it goes away instantly since this is now treated like basically like a new clip as far as the color page is concerned. Okay, so you can see one more time, perfectly, I'll go frame by frame, you can see, comes right on, tracks along perfectly. If there's a little problem, you can always head back in there and uh, change things, right? Perfectly there, perfectly there. And it even gets a little bit larger right here, as you can see, it's getting larger because of the, you know, the, the aspect or the way we're seeing the car. So we're changing the size of the blur as well. And there it goes. And lastly, just here at the end, just to make this point 100% clear, you can change the size of your blur as you go along. So let's just really drive this point home for those who still don't quite understand what I'm talking about. 
And this time, let's say, choose a circle, okay? Pull the circle way down. We're not really gonna blur anything in particular. We'll just say maybe a group of people or something like that. And let's say we want this to grow over time for some reason, not a problem. We'll do a blur, just a simple blur, okay? We'll start with it about there. Head over to our tracker. We'll come over to frame and we'll just uh, start right here and we'll keyframe it right there. And we'll go forward a few frames and now we want this over here. So now we know it moves, we already know how to move it, right? But then once it's here, maybe we'll leave it in that location, but up here we want it to grow, okay? So I can add my keyframe here or I can also come over here and just change the size. So now that blur is much larger, right? Come back over here to the tracker and we go back, you can see now exactly what's happening. So it moves over to the side and then it gets larger, okay? So again, if you're changing the view of something, of a license plate, of a person's face, something's coming at the camera, you can change the size of that blur uh, manually as well, as you can see. We'll go forward a few more frames. We'll come back over here, or we could use the controls on screen, change the size like this, and also, let's say, move it. Then we have that keyframe right there for us automatically. And then we'll come back here to the edit page. We'll look at it right here. So it moves over and then it gets larger, it moves over and then it gets smaller. You can see that blur right there. So that is how you can manually track and blur something in a clip or in a scene that might have a lot of motion or have things that obscure the view and the automatic tracker isn't working, not a problem. Head in there to your color page and just do that manually and you'll get perfect results here in DaVinci Resolve.